Hey, and welcome back. In this video, we're going to introduce the ideas behind what's called parametric bootstrapping. Uh, if you have not yet watched the video on non-parametric bootstrapping or more, a more general introduction to bootstrapping, I would go back and watch those first because I'm going to rely on a lot of uh, prior knowledge from uh, the the uh, non-parametric bootstrap to kind of really focus on how the parametric is different from the non-parametric. Okay, so here is our general recipe for how bootstrapping works um, with kind of the key differences kind of highlighted at the top. So remember in our non-parametric bootstrap, the first thing we did was we generated a sample of data using uh, the original data and resampling it. In the parametric bootstrap, the only real difference is, is this first step, how we're generating that sample. So instead of generating it by, by resampling the data, what we're going to do is we're going to use the parameters from our best fit model, including importantly the estimate of the, the standard error in that model, uh, and then use, sorry, the standard deviation, you know, that residual error, and use that to generate pseudo data uh, with the same distribution as the original model. So I could plug in, you know, I could take my X's and then, uh, you know, predict the mean using my best fit model and then predict any actual observation around that mean using an, a random number generator with the mean from the function and the uncertainty from that uh, standard deviation parameter from our model. So we'll be generating uh, samples around the model uh, using the model. So we've assumed the model is true. We've assumed our maximum likelihood estimates are good. And we want to use that to generate data as if it were from, uh, yeah, as if it was same. And one of the things that's nice about the, the non-parametric is it, 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 you don't have this feature of like, getting the same exact same data point twice. Every time you run a parametric bootstrap, your data is much more different from each other. Uh, but once we've generated this sample of data, the rest of what falls out is, is pretty much the same. We're going to fit our, our model to that sample, for example, by maximum likelihood. We're going to save those parameters. We're going to repeat this you know, a few thousand times. And then we're going to estimate uh, things like our confidence interval and our standard deviation uh, from those samples. So I'm going to, again, look at what this looks like in R. And again, I'm going to focus in red on how the parametric, how the parametric bootstrap differs from the non-parametric bootstrap. So again, at top, we just have our likelihood function, our maximum likelihood fit, we're saving the parameters that came out of that maximum likelihood fit. Um, and particularly, we're pulling out all the betas from there. We're setting up our number of bootstraps, our matrix to store our bootstrap samples. We're setting up a loop. And now in that first step is our generation of our replicate data. And in our non-parametric model, that was just a resampling of the rows and indices. And now in our parametric model, what I'm doing is I'm saying, I'm going to take my model and including the model for my mean and my mo and the model for my standard deviation, which is just an, a one number here because we've made a, a homoscedasticity assumption, constant variance assumption. I'm going to use now instead of the D norm function that we used in the likelihood, I'm going to use the R norm function to generate random numbers. And in fact, I'm going to generate N random numbers because I have N data points. And so this Y boot is now going to be a sample of predictions. It's going to pair with each of the original x's, um, but um, it'll be randomly distributed around the be our best fit curve. And with the amount of variability, the amount of scatter in this random number is controlled by this, this beta 4, our best fit estimate of our standard deviation. Now into optimum, I'm going to pass our x data and now this, re this simulated y data. It's like our original Y data, but different. Again, remember the big picture, the whole idea of bootstrapping is to, ha to have computers pretend to do the job 
of uh, running the experiment again. So we want to generate data sets that are like ones we would have captured if we had done this time again and again and again. So we're generating new data sets. Again, here now, assuming our model is true, we're going to generate new data sets from the model and then ask uh, how different uh, they would be. Now, because we have a random number generator here, the numbers, this y boot will be different from original y. And so our parameter fits are going to be different. Uh, but the amount of difference should reflect the, you know, the shape of this curve and the amount of variability that was in the original data. Cool. So I'm going to rely on the same quadratic example I had from the previous. Um, and so now when we get that back, we get an estimate of the beta 1, our intercept, beta 2, our slope, uh, beta 3, our quadratic, and beta 4, our sigma. I know I'm not showing it on this slide, but these distributions are, are really quite similar to the ones that came out of the, the non-parametric bootstrap. Um, you know, you could get, you could flip back and forth and do a side-by-side -side comparison. You could plot one on top of the other, uh, but they're not going to be hugely different in this case. Um, and in, again, the maximum likelihood estimate is on here again. And, and like before, we would infer that the intercept isn't different from zero. The slope, the two slopes are. And you know, the, the variance has to be because we can't have a negative variance. So some of the pros and cons of the bootstrapping as an approach. I would say the biggest pro of the bootstrap is that it does not require any fancy math. I mean, it really doesn't require any math at all. Uh, it just requires the ability to write down your model. Um, and actually, I'm going to jump back because there was something I forgot to mention about the quadratic, uh, sorry about the quadratic, the, the parametric, um, which is that this line of code in the likelihood uh, and this line of code in the simulating data are, are virtually identical. And when if, if I'm doing a parametric bootstrap, what I'm usually going to do is I'm gonna actually going to copy and paste the line from my likelihood down, uh, get rid of the sum, change my D norm to an R norm, change my data to my sample size, there's no need for logging. But otherwise, you know, the equation and everything else stays the same. So anyway, back to the pros and cons. No fancy math. If, if we code it up, uh, our maximum likelihood code already, uh, and we could get that to work, we're either just using a line of code to resample that data or a line of code to simulate from that model and then we're just setting up a for loop to do it a bunch of times instead of once. No fancy, nothing really fancy. And it's really quite general solution. It's hard to imagine a model that you couldn't do this with. Um, the, the cost is coding. You have to code it up and the computational cost. So, you know, if you, if you run LM, like you blink and it's done. It's done before you blink. It's done way faster than blinking. Uh, with a bootstrap, if you have to do some, an operation now thousands of times, it could take more. And if your data is large, it could take even more time. And for really large problems, this idea of bootstrapping can be quite computationally demanding. And we'll, you know, we'll see this as we move into more and more complicated analyses in the last half of the class, that we will start getting to things that are computationally demanding. Um, that said, it is very flexible. So it's easy to extend bootstrapping to, to models with multiple parameters. We can extend it to the estimate of the covariance between our parameters. So we didn't really focus on this yet, but um, very often when you estimate parameters in the model, they're not actually independent of each other. So like um, even with a simple linear model, the slope and the intercept trade off, and that's why we get kind of an hourglass shape uh, to our comps intervals. So in, in this case, um, the, the samples, uh, the fact that we can you know, look at the whole rows, we can est actually estimate the covariance structure in our parameters. We can extend this uh, in the next week's lecture. We're going to send this to learn how we can use what comes out of the bootstrap uh, to you know, putting uncertainties in our predictions. Uh, some pros and cons of parametric versus non-parametric. Now, the real uh, thing to know about the non-parametric is that it is really limited in its inference to in-sample. You can never see variability 
that's not captured in your original data. You can never see you know, a bigger data point than the biggest one you ever saw. You, you can never see a bigger, a smaller data point than the smallest one you ever saw. So uh, non-parametric intervals tend to be a little bit narrower. Um, and, and you tend to want to use them predominantly for in-sample inference. So if I'm asking a hypothesis about this data and I'm uh, making inference about it, it's fine. If I'm, uh, if I'm in a situation where I meet, need to make extrapolations, I'm likely underestimating the uncertainty that I'm going to encounter in an, in, when I'm doing extrapolations. Uh, the other thing to know about the non-parametric bootstrap is that it does not work well when you have small sample sizes. Because again, like I said, you're never going to sample you know, different data different than the ones you've already seen. So if the variability that you see in your sample is a lot less than the variability you see in the real world, uh, you're, you're going to be really limited in your inference. So you can think of like uh, kind of pathological cases, like you know, if I had three data points, there's only a pretty small number of ways I can re-permute those three data points. And they're never going to really give me a, an honest estimate of the variability in the real world. Um, so I would say in general, uh, when you have small sample sizes, there is a, a kind of an advantage of using the parametric approaches because you're able to generate a wider range of variability in your data. Uh, now the problem with the parametric is your inference about the uncertainty of your parameters only makes sense if the model you wrote down is reasonable. So if your simulated data from uh, a parametric bootstrap does not look like the real data, then the parameter estimates that come out of it will not be accurate. And, and actually that's a, a really good thing to test would be um, if you simulate data from your parametric bootstrap, look at it, plot it up, see what, it, you know, like, we, like if you were doing diagnostics, you know, if it's a time series data, plot the time series out. You know, if it's an XY data, plot the XY data out. But look at what you're simulating for data and ask like, does this simulated data look like real data? Um, and in fact, not only is that a good test of the parametric bootstrap, but I actually think it's a good test in general um, to know whether you've written down the right likelihood. Because if you've written down the right likelihood for the right model, then it should generate data like your real data. And, and, and in some sense, I've, I've seen the analogy made of thinking of a likelihood like a data generating machine. And so if, if the assumptions of say, you've made an assumption about your parameter distribution and its variance and the shape, if, if those assumptions are reasonable, then that likelihood should generate, uh, should, you know, if you run it as a random number generator should generate data like your true data. But that's not always true. I mean, if you think about the example we went through when we introduced uh, polynomial regression, you know, if, if I have this cubic relationship in the real world and I fit a linear model to it and I simulate data uh, around that linear model, that data sim simulated around the linear model will not look like my real data because my real data has a curve to it and, and my residuals have a huge pattern to it. And so that's a case where you wouldn't want to do a parametric bootstrap to estimate the uncertainty in a model that's not fitting well. And that's where the, the non-parametric doesn't have that distribute that problem because it always kind of reflects the pattern in the real data. Uh, and so just to wrap up, again, I'm gonna come back to, the, again, the high level view here. When we think about bootstrapping and think about this, this general algorithm, we're taking samples of our data as the input, the action we're performing is fitting the model and the output that we get out of this is samples of our parameters. So what we what the what the reason we're doing the bootstrap is to get those samples of our parameters to understand their uncertainty uh, and it's again based on this inference of if I if I repeated an experiment time and time again how often would I see results like the ones that I saw in reality. Thanks. <laughs>